Now, now we can talk about one thing that just keeps everybody going on Fridays in the fall. It's Friday night football, the night after trick or treating. But it was nothing but tricks, ugly tricks, discovered today at the Marion County football field in Jasper. Sequatchie Valley football is a hidden gem, I will say. Nothing does it for me like a Marion South Pittsburgh game. That on a Friday night when there's standing room only, eight to 15 rows deep around the outside of the fence, that does it. This though was to a whole new level. I would call it one of the stupidest scandals I've seen in high school football. Now, am I calling them the stupidest people? No, but this, they made some stupid decisions. I started getting worried uh, uh, Saturday after the game before. <laughs> and like I say, this was at that time this game was played last, the tenth game of the season. I don't know how many years later, but Don Dreider came up and he, he talked to me about uh, moving that. He said it, it hurt them before about you get so high and spend so much energy concentrating and winning, trying to win this game, that the playoff game is kind of like a letdown. But I can tell you from being a coach in both of those games, the, the Marion South Pittsburgh is way more than the Macaulay Baylor. Um, the other thing that I'll say on that is this. I think that Marion South Pittsburgh understand that that game's important, but at the same point, that's not the season goal. Well, I think the, the game that stands out the most uh, to me was the 94 game at South Pittsburgh, which was a 6 nothing win uh, for Marion County. Eric Westmoreland intercepted a pass and ran it back for the touchdown, and that was the only score in that game. Um, and if you go back and watch that now, you see then that there was no doubt Eric Westmoreland was going to not only play college football at a high level, but that he would be an NFL guy one day because it was still, um, I think, one of the greatest high school football efforts and plays I've ever seen. This was at South Pittsburgh. I remember the flags and the town just completely shut down and the buzz as you got closer to the stadium. It was college football, but not. I mean, it was an SEC game, but it wasn't because there were only 20,000. I don't know the exact numbers, but it wasn't 150,000, but it felt like it. The thing that, 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 that I loved the most about it was that it was going to be a packed house. There was going to be people standing on the fence. There was going to be people. So, so it, it, it makes it as, as electrifying as all the great games that I've been able to coach in. The fact that those two towns combined have, what, six, 7,000 people, maybe, and you're going to put 10,000 people show up every year for that game. They will not use the word Marion in South Pittsburgh. It's Jasper. I've heard stories of decades ago, football fields, the grass being lit on fire, doused in gasoline, matches thrown on the, I mean, torched. Gosh, I think there was a couple of years there in the 50s, uh, maybe two years where this rivalry didn't get played um, because it had gotten so heated um, the last time that it had played. There was actually a two year Hiatus. My year one, it was freezing cold. We had sleet, we had rain, we had wind, high temperatures, the lights go out at halftime. More than once, a group of their kids came down to our school and, and uh, 
tried to vandalize it a little bit. They tried to paint pirates on there with Roundup, and then one year they tore down the uh, goalpost. I've heard stories, and, and I witnessed a game, and I said, anything is really possible here. I mean, you hear stuff that I don't want to repeat. I, I do think as fans, it's, it's great because they do go too far with it. You, you know, and I say too far, but, but make it a great rivalry. People pronounce South Pittsburgh, South Pittsburgh, from down here. South Pittsburgh. It borders embarrassing at times, but it walks that line. I mean, when you win that one, does it feel a little bit sweeter? Absolutely. You know, I, I'd be a liar to say any different. It was for the most part, you know, I think it's always been a pretty good-natured sort of, of rivalry. I remember seeing it on Twitter. Well, like a lot of people, I learned about it first uh, on Facebook. Well, I mean, of course, I'm gonna know a little bit because my in-laws are from Marion County and my wife went to school there. I remember it being chaotic because it was, okay, this has now crossed the line of, because of the type of words they used. And there's been pranks that have played, and certainly you go talk to people that were a part of this in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and, and even into the 80s, and, and they'll tell you, you know, about the pranks that were played. My initial thought was the players didn't do this. I didn't think the players would do something like that. I thought someone took it too far and it was probably a student. I didn't say any of this on air, but that's initially what you think. You know, the one thing about all of this that I hate, and the one thing that gets overlooked is when you have two communities like that with so much pride and so much passion, when something like this happens, people immediately start to talk. There are all sorts of rumblings. When a story like this happens, there are so many people saying, pointing fingers or saying, this is what happened, that's what happened, I think it was them. So you sit there as a news organization knowing you can't go with any of it. You had a lot of kids from South Pittsburgh High School who were unfairly named in the community as being a part of this. And those were kids that are 17 years old, you know, high school seniors or whatever, that were at home studying for a test the night before, were at, were at, at a pep rally or a bonfire or whatever the night before. Because none of it is solid. And if you go with one, it's probably the wrong one because there's 30 stories out there. So you just sit there and you just collect info behind the scenes. But for a couple of days there, their names were being circulated. I've always thought that was extremely unfair. But I, I thought this is just, it, it goes to show how crazy. I mean, when I said it borderlines embarrassing, that jumped over the line that was embarrassing. And it was later that day when I had talked to someone that, um, that I trusted, that had knowledge of the investigation that was going on, who told me then, hey, I, I think this is, you know, this was an inside job. Well, school officials tell me that a baseball coach and assistant football coach Michael Schmidt has been placed on administrative leave with pay pending the outcome of the investigation.
Considering the past between these two schools, considering what they've been through and the, the back and forth, yeah, I thought it was another embarrassing moment leading up to a game night. And it was over and done with until the next time something dumb happened like that. That's a tough thing to swallow. You know, that's as, as tough of a thing to swallow as it is to think that, you know, your arch rival, but yet a program that you have a ton of respect for could do something like that. <laughs> A laughable moment when I found out it was the coaches of Mary County. Not laughable as in funny, but embarrassing. I mean, again, the last thought on my list was they would sabotage their own locker room, their own field house. That was the last thought. Why would somebody do that? All, all the pieces of it, as you, you kind of heard, you, you know, like, can that really be true? You, you know, you almost felt like it wasn't real. Not only was it the talk of, of this area, but you know you had Keith Oberman talking about it. You had, you know, it, it got national attention. Unfortunately, again, this I've always said this is a rivalry that deserves to have that kind of attention. It deserves to be on TV. It deserves to have attention heaped on it. Just not that kind of attention. But it wasn't. It was our own people, and it was ridiculous because. You don't need any motivation to play South Pittsburgh. You know, the puzzling thing about all this was always, okay, so it's a, it's a motivational ploy. Why do you need to do that to motivate for that game? You know, that game in and of itself is enough of a motivator. What do you hope to accomplish by pulling something like that. It just doesn't make sense. The day that the news broke that it was the coaches, I mean, it was a, it was a churning machine at that point. And then all the other storylines started to fade away and we started learning more and more and more. The credit card they used led them to surveillance video of them buying orange spray paint in the text messages. We're now seeing text messages. One of them said, we don't need to do this. He knew it wasn't a good idea, but they still did it. When it was made public, um, it didn't really, didn't really look good. You knew at that point, uh, not only that it was an inside job, but you knew all the, you knew everybody that was involved at that point. I'll be honest here, I think stuff like that happens more often than we think. Not the playbook stealing, again, that crosses the line to embarrassing. By the, that time, you knew every play, every bit of personnel, everything you wanted to know about South Pittsburgh, then more than you probably wanted to know. You didn't need to do any of that stuff. They, these two teams have played for 642 years, if my math is right. You know every play they run. They know every play you run. And it's pretty simple a lot of the times. But their betters are better than your betters. Uh, Vic Grider's a pretty good coach. Um, I don't, Vic has never been one that has ever been real secretive about what he what he does, you, you watch the film, you're, you're gonna get a good dose of, of who they are and what they are. I don't think that uh, stealing a playbook is necessarily gonna give anybody an advantage on, on either side. The, the, that paying a college player to, to, that's dumb because they knew it was against the rules, but I don't, I don't that's not, it doesn't carry the same weight. That's in the rule book, you know, the, and, it, and it should be. I mean, there is a reason why that is, you know, player safety, um, uh, insurance purposes, and I mean, there's plenty of reasons why that is not a good idea. But the competitive edge to bring in a former player who maybe has more speed because you're about to face speed, that's a competitive edge, and I don't put that on the same scale as stealing a playbook or vandalizing your own locker room to gain a competitive edge with slurs. You know, I think you're going to have certain individuals that are always going to look to try to get that, whatever that advantage may be. Winning is the name of the game. Uh, you can, uh, you know, as, as a coach, that's going to be how you're judged. And, and whether or not you get to keep a job oftentimes is whether or not you win. It's a, it's a credit to the people of that community because they weren't about to be defined by the stupidity of those decisions, and they weren't defined by it. 2013 certainly took it off the rails, and hopefully it has gotten back. I, I really don't know if it was over Christmas break or 
like Martin Luther vacation that's kind of soon after that. Somewhere in there, I got a phone call from the principal and uh, he asked me if, if I would want to talk. When you come in as a first year coach and you're taking over a, a program, I think not having spring practice is a, that's a bit of a hit. I think there's a lot of people, and I got the sense of this, that really believed the guy that was the coach there before was the coach for that place, and that his style and my new style didn't necessarily jihad. If you started on one side of the ball, you were a reserve on the other side, for the most part. Um, a lot of people didn't believe in that philosophy. You know, and, I, and, and I had serious questions come to me about it. You know, Marion County is pretty excited to be here, too. Nobody expected them to be here. They had no spring practice, no summer workouts because of what happened with the previous staff. Oh, oh my God. Call. Love the call. Down the sideline. Walker in front. What people don't know is all five of the linemen left. Second down and goal. Looking for the end zone. Touchdown. Seven of the 11 starters on defense were gone. They'll go to Zeman. Spins his way into the end zone. What people seem to remember was, yes, we did have Blake back. But really, there wasn't many juniors that were upcoming seniors. Seconds to go. Somehow a second mysteriously disappeared. Samson looking to throw. Receiver is there. Zeman catches it. Touchdown. That comes down to what they had bought, it, bought into of training, you know. And so it's not, not any coincidence that the morning of that game, if you were to have a video of first period, those kids were killing it in the weight room. And if you want to be more than average, you got to separate yourself on a daily basis. So one of the things that, that we did was I completely took everything out of the field house. And so when I say everything, I mean the carpet, the lockers, the weights, the desks, we scrubbed it, we laid new carpet down, we repainted the walls, we put new signs up. I mean, we redid everything. They weren't at the height of their strength when we played them. I, I, I don't know, I, I mean, they were pretty good. They went third, fourth round of the playoffs. I was very fortunate as a coach, you know. Um, we were 2-0 and versus them. I think year two, we had the greatest win in numbers that, that Marion's ever had in that series. Uh, so, so it was, you know, it was great. But, but I would say, I think we had success in that because from day one, that wasn't our goal. The people that orchestrated that paid no price. And when I say paid no price, yeah, okay, did they go to another job? Yeah. But did they lose money? Did they lose time? Did they lose retirement? Absolutely not. I think everybody deserves a second chance, um, and, and I hate it for those guys. I hate it for their families. I will never say they don't deserve another opportunity because if they can prove to society that they've changed and they're not going to do something idiotic like that again, yes, in my book, you deserve a second chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm.